thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I think mine will be a very good one. It's just a, a question in, in terms of the agroecological zones. I was wondering whether we are utilizing the agroecological zones for each country, especially when looking at the regional base, and also wondering if there is any update, given that climate change is an issue, and I'm very sure that climate change now plays a big role in the shifting of the, of the zones. So I was asking if this would be something that we could consider uh, even updating for the whole region, or are you updating for only a national level? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Tell me you can pick the three questions. Okay, I'm going to pick my thoughts around so that at least we can tackle the questions. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, I was here in the morning. My name is Ngugi. Um, we just run through the questions quickly. Um, maybe I should have said uh, open geographic is is really a unique um, is really a unique service. And when you look at that photo on the on this panel towards on the right, it really doesn't have like a methodology or a model. It's really collecting the data and availing it in a way that people can use. When the project was envisioned in the first phase, we were just supposed to collect two kinds of data sets. Water-related data sets and agroecological zones. That's it. But when we sat and we saw, no, we cannot just collect the water and agroecological zones. There are other data sets that are important. Like, for example, boundary, administrative boundaries, uh, settlements, towns, uh, forest reserves, protected areas, land use, land cover. So what we did, we incorporated all this and this is one of those services which is becoming a, a quite a predominant service and uh, one of the value additions that we are adding is on the dashboards and the analytics that you are seeing so the part of the analytic is what is unlocking the data that is there now coming to the questions in specific format um, do we have a system of standardization yes we are working with the national spatial data infrastructures for each country um, they are not yet there yet. Some countries have something, others don't have. But when it comes to standardizing, we have standardized the way in which um, the, the, coordinate, the coordinate reference systems uh, we are using. We are using a simple coordinate reference system. Maybe if we have GS people, they will know this, uh, the WGS1984, which is a common standard way of, uh, of providing and availing data set. In case somebody wants to convert it to the local projection, the geoportal allows you to do that. So when you're downloading the data, you can, you know, you can reproject it in the local projection that you need. But because this is this product is a, is a product at the regional level, we use a regional coordinate system, and that is WGS. And perhaps I should also mention that the data that we have there, we have quite a lot of data sets. I think over 500. But the ones that we have availed, 200 and something, is only the validated data sets. So only the validated data set from the respective institutions. Then um, the question was on uh, the question on uh, what percentage of data have we accumulated in terms of the vector data. Um, there is quite a, a number of data sets we have accumulated, accumulated, but what we can say the data sets that are good for use, even for your own work, we have the protected areas. Protected areas cover things like national parks, game reserves. Uh, conservancies and so on. We have the forest reserves that uh, my colleague demonstrated there. And we also have statistics. Like for example, if you want to see the forest trend of our, of our country from 1990 all the way to 2020, we have that information. In case you want to download, um, you know, you want to see the forest fires that are happening in, uh, in the region, we have that information. We have also tons of administrative data they are not yet updated, some are, some are not, for various countries. We have towns, we have settlements. So those are some of the data sets that I would say we have uh, made a good uh, progress on. One of the big initiatives we wanted to do was to bring in the demographic data. Uh, my colleague demonstrated um, a very, very good product that we have. This is called a gene for graphics. And the gene for graphic, it gives you a snapshot of the demographics in a specific area. So like this one is for Nairobi County. On the left side it shows you the male, and on the right side it shows you the, 
the male distribution, and the age groups are, uh, are by four, from zero to four years, five to nine, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, all the way over 100. And you can decide to fluctuate, you can change it the way you want. So like for example, if you just want to deal with people who are between zero to 18 years, you can adjust that particular pyramid. It's one of the powerful ways of, in which you can interact with the data. So if, for example, you want to work with specific people in a specific industry, and uh, you want a specific age group, the age pyramid can be used to pull out that kind of information. Um, about five months ago, we had people from Kenya Commercial Bank. Uh, they had come actually to learn how to use this particular tool called age pyramid to target specific people based on the products that they want to sell. Um, if you click on some of those buttons, like for example the total population, if you hit it, it will split into the male, the female, the available households, the same thing, the markets available. If you click on that dashboard, you will see all the markets that are available in Nairobi, the distance they are, the provinces they cover, and so on. So this is one of the nice cool features that we have unlocked in, uh, in the data set. Then there was a question on the raster data. This has been put across so many times, and we are actually we have actually considered to put raster data sets, specifically the Sentinel data. So there is quite a demand of uh, Sentinel data, and uh, we are thinking of how we can put it there for people to use, download, and make use of it. So that point is uh, has been taken to, has been taken note. Then the last question was on the regional agroecological zones. Um, the product that we have here at the regional level, the last time it was updated was four years ago. That was the last time it was updated. We did uh, agroecological zones for the IGAD region. That was the last time it was updated. If there is somebody in the room who is updating the agroecological zones, we would want to partner and support that particular initiative. As I have said, the Open Geographic Database, we do not produce the methodologies or the models. We actually use the data, we make it alive, we unlock it, and we disseminate it in a way in which a decision maker can quickly see what's happening. Like for example, in that particular age pyramid, if you want to know the largest age group in Nairobi, it is the age group between 20 to 24 years uh, for females. That is the biggest uh, age group that we have um, in, in, in our city. And we are hoping that we can do this for every other city. And actually this product is available for each of the 47 counties. So if you are looking for demographic information for each of the 47 counties, go to our geo portal, you'll be able to download for each and every county that, uh, uh, that, that is there. So we hope that uh, as we progress in the implementation of GMS, we'll also incorporate other, other cities, other towns in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ngugi, for the clarification. I believe we are okay, and uh, if there's any burning question, please. <laughs> okay. It's not a question. Uh -huh. uh, just an observation. Uh, now that I've been, um, one of the government officials, I'm um, concerned when you use the map of Kenya wrongly. So the agroecological zones, there's a huge chunk of the LME triangle, which is not. And once we present these ones to partners, and even some, we need to make it like, yeah, right there. So I believe there's a huge chunk which should be part of Kenya. It has been donated illegally. Thank you for that observation. Uh, if there's any question, kindly uh, uh, ask during uh, the next break we are going to have. Uh, kindly allow us to go to the next uh, presentation, uh, which I believe is the final one for today, because we have a group work after this. So, Mr. Kuki again is going to give us the final presentation for the day. And then uh, from there, he'll also direct us on how we are going to uh, break for the group discussion. So, take it on, Mr. Kuki. Yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, as I switch gears, allow me to comment something on what Matara said uh, regarding the boundary. Um, what we have there is not really the official boundary uh, information. Uh, we want to put a disclaimer. The official boundary information comes from the Survey of Kenya. But as you definitely know, when uh, you are coming up with a map, you need to, you need to have an outline. Okay? And uh, normally when you are having an outline, um, if you zoom in a little bit to that map, it's a PowerPoint, unfortunately you can't zoom. It's shaded in uh, four. It's like a dotted line. So um, that's how we uh, represent it. So I'll allow you to open my flash disk here. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, so this presentation, it's, uh, it's a quick presentation, and um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's introducing the next phase of the group discussion. So we have heard about GMS and Africa, an overview from the Africa continent level to the three services, uh, that is land degradation, wetlands, and open geographic. And I believe at this particular point, you, are, you, you know where you are more inclined. You know where you, are, you are more inclined. So this particular session, we shall have a group work session, and uh, we shall have three groups. So the three groups uh, will be split according to the three services that uh, we have presented. Um, so we will have a group for land degradation, a group for wetlands, and a group for open geographic. If you are uh, representing, if you have two people from the same institution, I would advise that uh, one of you goes to one service, another one goes to another, so that you can take advantage of it. So I will start um, uh, by looking at, uh, by just taking you through the needs assessment tool for the open geographic because we have just finished on it. So the idea here is to get some information about um, the, institutions, the institutions which are here. So the name of the institution, the contact person, the email address uh, for the people who will be that group. Then the, some of the questions would, uh, would you like your special data sets to be featured on our geoportal? That's a yes or no. Specify the data sets you want to share. Are there specific data sets you want to share? Uh, list them there. Uh, which softwares do you use for GIS mapping and remote sensing work? Uh, we want to know that uh, because part of the GMS program is, uh, is to do a lot of capacity building. So we want to do capacity building based on the tools that you have. Um, if commercial, do you have a license? Very, very important. If you're using ArcGIS and you don't have a license, uh, you can indicate there. Do you have your own geo portal? So if you have your own geo portal, uh, the question is, would you want us to link to the RSMRG GMS geo portal? for visibility and more awareness to those products. Then um, you can also indicate specific data dashboards you would like us to support you develop. Are there specific dashboards that you want us to report? Like for example, the way we had for forest reserves, protected areas, agroecological zones, the geographics for the, for the sensors. So if there's specific dashboards that you, you, you think of that uh, might be useful for the decision makers in your institution, uh, you can let us know. And then uh, check the kind of training you require, uh, if it's something to do with geoportal development, publishing web map services, uh, developing meta dashboards, story maps, web maps, and, and so on. And uh, perhaps I should mention that this particular service is meant to have products that should be consumed by a non-GIS person. That's why we talk about dashboards, story maps, you know, there's quite of analytics that is going there. So, uh, so when you're looking at it, don't look at it in terms of a GIS person, look at it from a, a person who uh, would want to make use of this data and they do not have a background of GIS. So that is the first one. Um, that's the first uh, tool for the open geographic, simple. Um, so I'll go to the other tool for land degradation. So the land degradation, same story. Uh, you get the details of the institutions which, are, which will be represented in that group, the contact person, the email address. So the question is, what are the key drivers of land degradation in the country? And you can specify the location, uh, which mitigation measures have been put in place to control land degradation, um, um, which areas can be, cla can be classified as land degradation hotspots. These are severely degraded areas. We would want to know that. Which areas are considered as bright spots? So these are areas that have recovered from uh, high degradation. So these are some of the success stories. A lot of things have been done, but sometimes we don't, we tend not to, 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 to know about them. So we want to know about these bright spots. Then um, this, uh, there's a part for the institution's framework, uh, which institutions are mandated to tackle land degradation, assessment and monitoring. Um, is there a policy framework that uh, revolves that? And then when it comes to data, when it comes to data, which national spatial data sets are available for land degradation assessment? So you will take where it's applicable um, and, and you can comment how you want GMS and Africa to support you there. Uh, do you have access or do you have some land use land cover data? Do you have rainfall data? Do you have access to rainfall data? Do you have access to soil data, topography data, human population, livestock, and, and 
so on. So if we do not have access to these data sets, the program has new ways of, of bringing these data sets and uh, we can lie together on how that can be um, made. Which are the national levels, uh, host institution for the above data sets? Then um, the last part is, uh, does your institution have GS infrastructure, the capacity, you know, for land degradation uh, assessments? Uh, then again, it's going to indicate that uh, some, of the, some of the areas you require capacity enhancement, uh, specific GS technical skills, or it could be computing resources, uh, it could be land degradation assessment, and um, the last thing is, uh, how do you want to make use of the GMS and Africa land degradation maps? What really, what, what, what decision would you want to make uh, using that information? So that is the second one. Um, the third tool is on wetlands, and wetlands, um, because it's quite um, a, vast, uh, a vast one, um, uh, it has the same process, and um, it has a bit of background on what wetlands are. Um, so you will indicate to us um, what is the, uh, some of the, you, you can indicate for us some of the wetlands, some of the key wetlands that uh, um, you would want us uh, to, 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 to have in our, in our database. Um, and perhaps you can uh, consider the ones that are internationally recognized or the ones which have a national uh, importance, uh, because I know we have a lot of wetlands in Kenya. Um, how long, how long, how, how does the local people interpret the physical boundary of the wetlands, their conflicts, and so on? So you can indicate that according to how you deal with the, with, with the institutions. Um, what type of ecosystems are in the wetlands? So here you tick uh, which ecosystems are there. Are there aquatic animals, forest animals, some of the species, conservation status? You know, just um, um, you can indicate to us what are some of the interactions that uh, people have uh, with the wetlands. One of the things that we have seen with wetlands, uh, you find that um, uh, we, they have animals, like for example the hippos, and there's quite a clash between the wetland, I mean the, between the government and the, and, and, and the local people, because the wetland is inhabiting uh, animals, and yet uh, they are the ones which are destroying the crops. So it's good to know some, some of these wetlands that uh, are exhibiting this kind of characteristics. Are there any conflicts? Yeah, that's what I've just mentioned. Then uh, there's a part on uh, ecological services, which ecological services are available uh, to that particular wetland. Again, there you will tick based on uh, the wetland that uh, you have listed. Um, is there a risk of, ex of exploiting these services? Uh, and then what are some of the economic activities that are derived from that wetland? Because some of the wetlands have, uh, you know, they have potential to be exploited either agriculture-wise, by fishing or by forest products. You can indicate to us there. Then uh, are there conservation programs that are going in these wetlands? Somebody talked about a lot of things which are being done in the wetlands. Uh, perhaps this is the area that you can list some of the ongoing initiatives to ensure that there is no duplicate of efforts. Uh, and then uh, what are some of the major drivers of wetland degradation? And the last uh, question is on uh, at the national level, what are some of the challenges that uh, are affecting wetlands monitoring and conservation? Is it on policies? Is it, is it on issues to do with the, uh, the uh, uh, reclaiming those lands and so on? So that is really an overview of the three tools that um, we shall be using for the group one exercise. And um, at this particular point, we would want to um, split. We can agree who goes where. Uh, perhaps by a show of hands, um, uh, we'll see how many people are interested in land degradation then after that we do wetlands, and then after that we do open geographic. But that does not mean that uh, once you have finished, maybe if there's a panic thing that you wanted to add in each of the service, there's no reason why you cannot put that group and you know, put your suggestion there, then you go to where, where you are being located, okay? So let's begin with um, land degradation. So we will avail this, um, we will avail this um, uh, document so each group will have each group will have um, a secretary, somebody who will be doing, who will be taking the notes. We suggest you take the notes directly into the work document because um, this will be presented tomorrow. Um, then uh, each group will require a group leader, so we need a group leader and a secretary. So the group leader will be the one to present the work tomorrow. The secretary will assist in taking the notes that uh, will be presented tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning. After the uh, after the after after a re 
leader, we will have the three uh, group leaders presenting to us the feedback from the, from the group discussion. Um, yeah, so let's start with land degradation. Land degradation, maybe we can have by a show of hands how many people are interested in the land degradation. Nice, it's quite a good presentation. So this, uh, it's always a good one. Um, so land degradation, I'll, um, 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 I think we can use, land degradation can use this room because it's, it's quite a big room. I mean, it's quite a big number. Wetlands, 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 wetlands. Okay, wetlands, uh, we are about, um, yeah, seven there. So wetlands, I think we can use the, if the door is open, we can use the meeting room that is uh, labeled M1. So my colleague, maybe then you can uh, arrange M1 to be opened. M1 is just uh, the room that is before entering uh, this particular room. Then um, there is um, open geographic. How many people are interested in open geographic? Open geographic people? Okay. Only three. <laughs> open geographic? Okay, so we we'll have uh, the Open Geographic team. Um, the Open Geographic team, because you are a small team, you can choose where you want. But uh, actually, you use, um, I'll show you, there's a, room, um, there's a room in the first floor, uh, labeled B5. Uh, it's the Bama room, so you use that room. I'll, I'll, show you, I'll show you that room. But remember, in case there's a contribution you needed to make in each of the three groups, do not hesitate to go there and make that uh, contribution, okay? So I think we uh, I think we'll just go directly to the groups and um, thereafter uh, feel free to break for tea break at 4:30 um, in the same place where we had lunch and um, in case you not have been, in case you not have finished your group work you can resume in case you have been done with your group work um, we'll uh, we'll call it a day so the next uh, session that we shall have is uh, tomorrow morning where we shall have the recap and then the, the group uh, feedback. So we can, uh, we, can, we can leave it at that and ask the same one who has a question. So after, after that, we don't need to convene again. Correct, so. correct. After that, after you have done with your group work, after you have made your input, yes. uh, feel free to, to leave at uh, your free will. But make sure you take something. Uh,